Hi guys, I'm Carla and I'm a software engineer. And I'm really sorry I haven't posted in a long time. I have been incredibly busy with home renovations and I live in Michigan and it's only really nice out like two months out of the year. So I have been enjoying that. And I'm here today to talk to you about tips and tricks for technical interviews. So I have recently gained a lot of popularity on Twitter and a lot of this came after I posted that I am starting a new job at Microsoft. So I went through their whole interview process and actually a little earlier too, I went through Google's interview process, didn't get an offer, but um, I learned a lot in how to interview, how to be better at technical interviews. That, and I've also interviewed for other large tech companies like Uber, PayPal, um, Chick-fil-A, not a tech company, and, and some smaller companies. This wasn't all in the past like six months, like I'm talking like the last five years, plus some internships too. So I have a huge list of tips and tricks. I am sorry for the poor audio. My mic actually died on me as I was setting up my camera today. So let me get my notes out. Before I begin, I actually wrote up a Medium article with all of this advice and I will link it in the description in case you wanna follow along. I get more in depth on how to go into like actually solving the questions too. And I put like an example problem, like how you would explain this problem and solve it. So first things first, a technical interview or a coding interview, whatever you wanna call it, is the one time that you wanna be like Ed Sheeran and think out loud. The interviewer wants to know, can you explain problems, technical problems, can you break them down and can you communicate in a meaningful manner to someone else on code? And that is probably one of the harder things, especially for software engineers and for newer software engineers. It's kind of like a self-conscious thing too, because like you don't really want to talk about what you're writing. So that's like the biggest thing. The interviewer is going to need you to walk them through every single step. Uh, because if you just sit there and just type silently, it, you kind of give off the impression that you're not a great communicator. And that's one thing that uh, is really big in software engineering. You need to be able to communicate. So let's say the interviewer has given you your technical question. You're like, yes, this is awesome. I totally studied this. I know what's going on. Stop. Don't write any code. <laughs> Don't even write pseudocode. First thing you want to do is ask clarifying questions. So for example, what is a good clarifying question? Always ask, what data type is the input going to be? What data type do you want the output to be? Uh, what happens if you get a, a blank input? What happens if you get an invalid input? Things like that. So you are getting all of the edge cases around this technical question that you're being asked. Actually, in my Medium article, I talk about the example of let's say a technical interviewer wants you to reverse the words in a sentence. So you wanna make sure, one, are you getting a string or a list or an array uh, as your input? Are you, do you have to worry about punctuation, capitalization, apostrophes, things like that, because that's going to uh, really change how you solve the question. So clarifying questions. Next, don't start to write code yet. The next thing you need to do before you write code, is to pseudocode your problem. So again, that's showing the interviewer that you can take a very large problem and break it down into more manageable chunks. So what I usually do is at the top of the file or the top of the function that we're working on, I'll just put three or four lines of pseudocode that go through the, each of the major uh, sections of what I'm trying to do. So in this example of reversing the words of a sentence, I'll probably go number one, Let's say uh, the input is going to be a string. Well, first thing we need to do is split the string into a list of words. Then we're going to reverse the list and then we are going to join the list again into a string, something like that. And <laughs> one thing it also shows your interviewer is that you actually know how to write comments. Um, yeah, you'd be surprised the amount of software engineers that um, don't comment their code. Yeah, it's a problem. Anyways. So also big pro tip, when you break down your problem into these like five or six lines of pseudocode, this will actually make it really, really easy for you to now modularize your code. And by modular modularization, I mean breaking uh, down the problem into multiple functions. Like 
Depending on the problem you're doing, you might be able just to do everything in one function, but helper functions also, again, prove to your interviewer that you know how to break down a problem and you can uh, section it out into different chunks and make your main function as uh, clean as possible. So usually these like five or six lines of pseudocode are each going to be uh, turned into like two or three different helper functions. And an example I just gave you, each line of pseudocode is its own function. Perfect. So modularize your code. Big, big tip. Next thing I want to talk about <laughs> is do not sweat the little stuff. So let's say you are typing away. You've got this. This question is easy. You've totally studied it before. And now you need to take a string and put it all in lowercase. And you cannot remember for the life of you what the method is called. Is it lower? Is it too lower? Is it too lowercase? You know, brain explosion. My chair keeps squeaking. Don't sweat it. Tell the interviewer, hey, I want to do this to my string. I know how to do it. I cannot remember the, 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 the method name, it's just on the tip of my tongue. Don't sweat it because like 99% of the time in my experience in like the 15 or 20 technical interviews I've done in the past five years is they're going to say one of three things. One, they're just gonna tell you what it is. They're gonna like, oh yeah, in Python it's this, in JavaScript it's that. I, I mean, I don't even remember off the top of my head which one lowercase is all the letters in a string, but whatever. Uh, two, they're gonna just tell you to Google it. Just open a new tab and Google it because in the real world, that's what you're gonna do like the date formats in JavaScript. Nobody remembers how to do that, me included. Um, or they're going to say, oh, just write what, whatever you think it is, and then we'll go back to it later. I understand what you're getting to. So it's such a minor problem that like they know in the real world, you're gonna be able to figure it out. So they're not going to be too concerned. So I won't worry about that. So another big tip is to expect non-code related questions. I know, right? Technical interview, code? That's usually what you're going to expect and that's what you're going to usually study. But what differentiates a good programmer with a great programmer is the ability to design and talk about systems. So systems design and DevOps is extremely important to know. And these questions uh, usually range from, you know, how would you design an API that gets a million hits per minute? Or how would you design the back end of Twitter, Facebook, Uber, eBay, something like that, where you need to talk about how you're going to build uh, relations in the database and how will you connect it to um, your APIs? How will you connect it to the front end? What's the most efficient way to do this? And these questions are very theoretical. Uh, you're not really gonna write any code. But that's something that's always surprised me that I'll spend hours studying uh, coding problems and you know remembering the most efficient way to invert a binary tree or whatever. And then I get to my interview and they're like, oh yeah, so how would you automate this one backend system? And I'm like, oh yeah. Uh, so definitely study that. Another tip is to keep track of time. Your interview might feel like an eternity, but it's only going to be roughly 45 minutes to an hour. And with maybe like 10 minutes of that being introductions and talking about the position or your resume, you're really not left a lot of time to solve maybe like between one and three questions or technical problems that the interviewer is going to give you. So I don't know, like 15 to 25 minutes each question. And you don't want to get stuck on something where maybe it's not a big deal. It is almost always better to have a non-working but conceptually correct solution than it is to have a half-finished one that's 100% correct and would compile and run. So if you get stuck, ask your interviewer for a hint. Just tell them like, oh, I think I would go about doing this this way, but that doesn't really work or that's not very efficient. Usually they'll give you hints and they, usually don't mark it against you because they ex they don't really expect you to solve a lot of these in like 10 minutes or 15 minutes in the real world. In the real world, you have to take in a lot of other things into consideration. So, and very lastly, 
is do not take this personally. Whether you do amazing and they don't move forward with you as a candidate or you fail and don't feel like a failure. Just take a deep breath. You are worth a lot more than a 45 minute technical interview. Keep it up. Uh, ask me questions on Twitter. I post jokes all the time. Like right now I have a lot of time on my hands since I'm finishing one job and moving. Uh, let me know what you want to talk about. I'll actually do another video on how to prepare for technical interviews. So I'll keep you posted. Bye for now.